Welcome to Professor Chemistry. Uh, this video will focus on taking a Lewis structure, evaluating the bond that occurs between uh, the elements in the compound, uh, and determine whether it's a covalent or polar covalent bond, and then uh, using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, uh, determining the three-dimensional geometry of the molecule. Ultimately, what we're trying to find out is, does the molecule have a dipole moment, which means the molecule is polar, that it has a positive and negative end to it. So let's focus on a compound like uh, carbon tetrachloride. And so carbon tetrachloride is carbon with four chlorines attached. So the first thing we have to do is come up with the Lewis structure. And to do that, we need to know how many valence electrons are in this particular molecule. So carbon in, being in group 14 has four. And then we have uh, four chlorines times the number of valence electrons in each chlorine is seven, since it's in group 17. So four plus uh, 28 is 32 electrons. So we take that and we uh, put a carbon in the center and the four chlorines around it like so. And you're saying, how do you know carbon goes in the center? Well, carbon is the least electronegative and electronegativity is the ability of an atom to pull electrons off of another atom that it's bonded to. And electronegativity increases as you go across the periodic table and it decreases as you go down. Uh, the most electronegative element on the periodic table is fluorine. So uh, chlorine right below it, if we were to evaluate the bond between carbon and chlorine, uh, chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.0 and carbon is 2.5. And so the difference here is 0.5. And that tells us that the bond that occurs between carbon and chlorine is polar covalent. So covalent means there's a sharing of electrons. So we show that in a Lewis structure by showing dots between the chlorine and the carbon. These dots represent valence electrons. Uh, and the dots between the carbon and chlorine get to be counted by both the carbon and chlorine. And these are called bonding pairs. Then on the chlorine, there are pairs that are not involved in bonding. These are called uh, lone pairs or non-bonding pairs and each chlorine is going to have three non-bonding pairs so that each chlorine feels like it has a total of eight electrons around it. Again the octet rule which says that atoms will gain or lose electrons to get a full outer shell of eight. So this is our Lewis structure for carbon tetrachloride and what you'll notice is each uh, chlorine has eight electrons around it and carbon in the middle has eight electrons around it. So uh, the type of bond again that occurs between carbon and chlorine is called polar covalent. We can symbolize that as an arrow, a vector uh, that shows the electrons spend more time around the chlorine than the carbon because chlorine is more electronegative. Another way we do this is we use a lowercase delta symbol. Uh, this would be partially positive on carbon and partially negative on chlorine. So that also indicates a polar covalent bond. So from this we uh, are going to use a new theory called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR and this theory helps us determine the three-dimensional geometry of the molecule. So the way this works is we look at this uh, Lewis structure for carbon. So you have to, uh, carbon tetrachloride. You must have a proper Lewis structure, correct Lewis structure, in order to do VSEPR. So uh, A represents the central atom, and X represents the number of bonding pairs coming off the central atom. So in this case, we have four bonding pairs coming off of carbon. Now, the thing about VSEPR that some people get confused about doesn't matter whether this would be a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond. Uh, VSEPR treats that as one bonding pair. So it's a, and that's if these were all double bonds between carbon and chlorine, uh, it would still be AX4 for the um, classification uh, according to VSEPR theory. 
So what we need to do here is how do you keep four things as far away from each other as possible? Now a lot of people think the Lewis structure tells you that, that it's going to be a cross here. Problem with this is that the angle here is 90 degrees and we can do better in a three-dimensional framework. So the carbon goes here, uh, we'll put a chlorine up here and a chlorine here. All right, and then a chlorine that's coming out of the screen at you, which we represent with the triangle. And then we'll have a chlorine going back through the board, which we represent as a dashed line, and we'll have a chlorine here. So this is really important that you can draw the structure correctly. Uh, the solid lines here between the carbon and chlorines, that means in the same plane as the screen, all right? The triangle line here represents a chlorine coming out of the screen at you and then the dash line represents the chlorine going back behind the screen. All right. So when we do that we can see this angle is much greater than 90. In fact it's 109.5 and I would uh, make a note of that because that's important. So thinking in three dimensions uh, we get a larger bond angle than thinking in two dimensions like the cross above. So this particular shape is called tetrahedral. Tetra means four and hedral means sided. Just like an octahedral is eight-sided, like your stop sign, all right? So how do we get tetrahedral? Well, from this carbon, I mean this chlorine up to this chlorine and then down to this chlorine and then over to here, that's one side. Then we have a side here between these two chlorines and then we have one in the back between these two chlorines and then there's a side underneath this um, I, I hate to call it a pyramid but it is it's a pyramid but we have other structures that we call pyramids so we call this particular structure tetrahedral four-sided all right now why do we need to know the uh, geometry? Well let's go back and look at uh, what we know about the types of bonds. We know that these chlorines are arranged in a tetrahedral geometry and again solid lines represent in the same plane as the screen. Triangle represents coming out at you and dash line. Sometimes we just use dashes like that means going back through. Now the electronegativities we know that these chlorines are pulling the electrons away from the carbon so we can write vectors like that. Uh, or if you like the partially negative charge uh, on each one of the chlorines like that. All right, we could do that, and that means a partially positive on the carbon. And again, where this is coming from is we evaluated each bond up here, and we're doing the same thing. We're taking this plus the geometry, putting that all together, and we get this structure. And what we're trying to determine is whether this structure would dissolve in water or not. And so water, being a polar substance, will dissolve other polar substances. So is carbon tetrachloride polar or nonpolar as a molecule? Does it have a dipole moment? Does it have a positive end and negative end to it? That's what we want to know. So the two ways we can evaluate this is one is, can you tell me in overall direction these arrows are pointing? Uh, and the answer is, you can't because these are pointing down, this one's pointing up. They cancel each other out and there's no overall resultant vector. So that tells me this molecule is considered nonpolar. That means it doesn't have a positive and negative end to it. So what's interesting about this molecule is it's got one of the two things required for it to be a polar molecule and that is it's got polar covalent bonds. We see that here but it doesn't have the correct geometry. This geometry causes these forces to all cancel each other out and so that makes this a nonpolar molecule. Now in class we talk about another method of determining whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar and that is to if we can draw an imaginary line through the molecule and get strictly positive in a strictly negative region <clears throat> then we would say the molecule is polar. So you may draw an imaginary line like that through the molecule. Well, it's negative on this side and it's negative on this side. So 
if you can't draw an imaginary line and get strictly positive on one side of the line and strictly negative on the other side of the line, again, we would call this a nonpolar molecule. And why that's so important is that we now know that this being a nonpolar molecule, it's not going to dissolve in water. All right, so if we mix this with water, we would see two separate layers. Now, what's interesting about this is that that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if this was a dry cleaning fluid uh, and it's used to clean your clothes and most of your uh, the dirt and oils on your clothes are nonpolar, this would be great for that. It would dissolve the uh, oils and dirts on your clothes without harming the fabric. And so that's what's so great about carbon tetrachloride. It's a nonpolar substance that would dissolve nonpolar dirt and oils from your clothes. Um, the downside to carbon tetrachloride uh, is that it was determined to be carcinogenic and therefore uh, it's been discontinued as a dry cleaning fluid. All right. So just to summarize again, what you're doing in uh, determining overall molecular polarity uh, of a compound or molecule is first we start with the chemical formula, then we calculate the total number of valence electrons, then we generate a Lewis structure. Once we generate a Lewis structure, we will evaluate the type of bonding that's occurring between the elements, and that's for each individual bond. For this one, it happens to be four carbon chlorine bonds and we look at the electronegativities of those uh, two elements off of a, an electronegativity table, or you can memorize them. I do encourage you to memorize the electronegativities of hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and sulfur. Those come up so often, um, and it's real easy. Um, fluorine is the most electronegative at 4.0. Oxygen 3.5, nitrogen 3.0, carbon 2.5, hydrogen 2.1. Uh, chlorine has the same electronegativity as nitrogen at 3.0, and sulfur has the same electronegativity as carbon at 2.5. So once we evaluate uh, the electronegativity difference, we now know this is a polar covalent bond. So we now have one half of the equation to make a polar molecule. That means a molecule that has a positive and negative end. So the next step is we have to do uh, the valence shell electron pair uh, repulsion theory, apply that to this um, Lewis structure to determine what the three-dimensional geometry of the molecule is going to look like. So uh, this is AX4. We have four bonding pairs coming off the central atom of carbon, and so that's why it's called AX4. So AX4, how do you keep four things as far away from each other as possible? Well, you got to think in three dimensions, and that is this tetrahedral geometry. So this is called a tetrahedral framework, but it's also called a tetrahedral geometry. So once we apply, uh, place the uh, chlorines in the uh, corners of the tetrahedral, uh, and we draw this structure, uh, and then apply the... Um, bond polarities to the structure, we can determine that the molecule itself is nonpolar, that the, the molecule does not have a positive and negative end to it. And so knowing that this molecule is nonpolar, we now can say that this substance will not dissolve in water. I hope this helps. I can create other videos. Just uh, email me and let me know. Thank you.